All right, so today we're going to talk about um, what it actually means for information transfer to occur and the different types of information systems we have um, and well, basically three different ways to categorize them. Okay, so um, hopefully by the end of this you'll be able to recall and apply the different steps for information transfer and you should be able to describe with examples the different types of information systems. All right, so every time we have information transfer, there are four components that are always there. First, there is a common code between the parties. In other words, there needs to be something that you're both going to understand. And right now, it's English. Like, English is the code that you and I share, okay? There needs to be a message. Now, the message is what I'm telling you, okay? So that's what's going to be passed along. There's a transmitter. In this case, it's it's going to be the internet. And there's a decoder. And that's your brain. Your brain sort of... Well, actually, there could be two ways of looking. It could be your brain that takes the information in, turns it into, you know, from English to whatever is the brain does with it. Or it could be the computer which is taking it from basically ones and zeros into this video you're watching now. All right, so the first thing, you could have a code common to both parties. Now, this could be binary, which is, that's the ones and zeros we talk about with computers. It could be pictures or codes. Um, now, these need to be learned when you are constructing the message, okay? Uh, words and music are both examples of this. It must be deliberately used. Okay, so you use the, the conventions or the code that you agree upon, and it has to be deliberate. It can't be an accidental message, otherwise it's not information transfer, it's interference. Okay, so the message. You have a message or data that needs to be passed on. Okay, um, Okay, so if something is transferred electronically like this is, it will need to be coded again into a different type. That's what we're saying. So there's the code of the English language, but it's also going to be coded into ones and zeros for the computer to work out, okay? Um, and it must be systematic and consistent. In other words, it has to go, you know, step by step along, and it needs to be the same every time. Otherwise, the other computer won't be able to work it out. So, um, we can do it either analog or digital. Now, digital is tend to be preferred to analog just because they're more reliable, and analog systems, they're subject to degradation a bit more. Um, okay, so, coded message, transmission. Once it's been coded, it needs to be sent to where it's going. That's the transmission. The transmission is the sending of it. Um, generally, we use electric current, so the electric current, the voltage, or sorry, the current, increases or decreases and that says yes or no um, and or we can use electromagnetic waves to carry messages or a combination of both um, so your computers use the ones and zeros and they basically turn the signal on which is the current high and turn the signal off current low um, and this is the stage where interference happens is the transmission more than anything else um, and that can be as simple as just having really long cords between two things. Uh, if you've got really long cords, that's a source of interference, particularly with electrical current as the mode of transmission. All right, so decoder. Now, we've had to extract the message, and there are two, two steps in that. First, you've got to detect and separate the code from the the carrier current or wave. In other words, there'll be a baseline current, and there'll be a spike every time it's a turn on, so it's a one, and you need to pull those out. Then you have to convert it back into the form that we can detect. So for example, I'm talking to you now, um, the computer receives that code, and then it transforms it back into a video for you to watch. So you can, your senses can take it in and make meaning. So once all four of those things have taken place, so the three steps, the four aspects of it, so the message, and then the three steps for sending those messages, communication's taken place. 
Okay, so here we have the message encoded, transmission, you're going to have the message over here. Message encoded, transmission, which is where interference tends to happen, and then the message decoding. Um, sometimes something will be lost in translation, that's what that phrase means, and yeah. Alright, so here's an example with satellite communication, okay, and this uses electromagnetic waves. So if we have a signal coming from here, first you have the message, right? This is transmission to the satellite, and then it's decoded. Then it's recoded and sent down, where it's uncoded, oh sorry, decoded again. So encoded, transmitted, decoded, encoded, transmitted, decoded. Alright, so types of information systems. Now, we're going to look at how we, we split these up into three different categories, oh, three different types of categories. So we've got verbal and nonverbal, short distance and long distance, and electronic and non-electronic. Now, there are overla overlaps between these. For example, radar is non-verbal, okay, but it's long distance and electronic. Email is verbal because it uses language, but it's also, it's still long distance and electronic. So we can see there's that overlap. Um, so I want you to create a table for each of these three categories, okay, so verbal, non-verbal, uh, short distance, long distance, etc. And I want you to list a bunch of different uh, types of communication. So verbal, you'd have email, talking, non-verbal, body language, etc. All right. So let's go through these. Verbal and non-verbal -verbal communication involves use of a language or that common code that's either spoken or written from uh, sender to receiver. Non-verbal, it's not spoken or written language, um, can, but can take place directly, so body language or via a communication device, um, sending a picture. Okay, so short distance, long distance. Okay, short distance, we're in the same room, yeah? Uh, long distance uh, depends how we're doing it. So you can have long distance over medium-sized distances or massive distances. Um, electronic versus non-electronic. So this is a newer one, obviously, and it it works by controlling the current, okay, um, up and down. So we can do this, essentially we do this using circuits and and speakers, like they, they're controlled by current, so if the current's higher, the speaker, you know, it's louder. Alright, that's it. So, alright, be prepared for class, and we'll see you later.